you want to see how we built this nice little uh, shoe and boot stand, stand by because that's what we're going to do today. Good morning and uh, welcome to another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 179. Today we're going to be building a shoe stand or shoe rack, whatever you call it. Uh, it's going to be pretty uh, dado and rabbit intensive, so we're going to concentrate a little bit more on the cabinet uh, bu building end of it this time. But we're not going to get anything done unless we do what? That's right, we need to knock off the chit chat and get to work. My friend uh, asked me if I could make this uh, shoe rack here, picture off the internet. Uh, it's got a section for boots. It's got a uh, pine top and then uh, five shelves here in the, or four shelves here in the center. To keep myself from going nuts, I'm really trying to concentrate on one part at a time. And what I'm doing now is putting this dado right here in the top and the bottom. Both the top and the bottom will have these dados that will come across here. And these cabinet dividers here, which I haven't cut the length yet, will fit right in the slot like this. I've measured out from the fence to the edge of the dado set. Um, exactly uh, 11 and 3 eighths inches. Next will be a dado that goes across the side and I'm going to space it up exactly 16 and 3 eighths from the bottom. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is put rabbits on the edges here. Um, they're going to be 3 quarters inch wide and 3 eighths inch deep. Here you can see our dado set is exactly the same setup as for the dados but I put the sacrificial fence in here because I want to, it's essentially putting the dado right on the edge of the board and whenever you put a groove on the edge of the board it's called a, a rabbit instead of a dado so here's our test piece it'll go right in there the top and the bottom will go right in that uh, rabbit there. I got those uh, rabbits finished and I did a kind of a dry fit up here so that I could determine exactly where all the dados are going to go. Uh, the, the other dados for these uh, two shelf dividers here. I originally thought that the shelves that go in the center section here were held in by uh, dados um, but I don't think that anymore let me show you why I know you're looking at a grainy photograph through a video camera over the internet so you probably can't see this but it's a subtle detail right here you can see a little shadow line that tells me that this trim doesn't come all the way to the outside here. Um, that, that this horizontal trim is behind this vertical trim here. So that means that these three shelves must be adjustable. What I have to do now is I need a corresponding dado, a three-quarter inch dado, on this side of the shelf divider to receive this um, installed shelf here. Now 
like to keep the thing as assembled as I can as I cut these so that there's uh, less of a chance of screwing it up. What I got to do now are put some vertical dados going this way on these uh, shelf dividers and they got to be on this side. What will happen is um, this adjustable shelving material I'll make a shallow groove and that shelving material fits right down in that groove and that way the shelf will sit flush against the uh, the side. What I'll do is I'm going to put that dado I set my fence at uh, four inches and I'll put the dado four inches from this side and then four inches from this side and that should be You can see that this uh, cabinet divider here is cut about a quarter of an inch uh, short of the back here. Um, and that's to receive the bottom, which would be quarter inch plywood like this, like that. So what we need now is a rabbit all the way around on the outside here. So what I do is I go around and mark the exact edge that I want that rabbit on. It's generally a good sign uh, if your cabinet will stay together like this without any glue or nails. It means your dados are good, your rabbits are good, um, and everything is uh, correctly laid out. Okay, I guess we can uh, start doing some assembly. Let's set it up and see if uh, all of our dados are in place. Well, I got it glued up, and what I'm doing now is installing some uh, little three inch nubby legs on it. I'll go ahead and uh, install these legs, and I'll show you what's going on. When I copy something, I, I try to be as faithful as I can to the original design. Uh, that's part of the fun, trying to figure out how it's built 
and trying to reproduce it. But in this case, I had to make an exception because uh, to me, this thing sitting on the ground is, is unacceptable. In, in this case, it probably works because it's indoors, but I don't know if the one we're building is going to be indoors or on the porch or in the garage, in a mudroom, I don't know. But that thing sitting against the ground like that uh, is problematic. Okay, what I'll do now is uh, flip it over on its back again and install the rest of this trim. I just wanted to see what it looked like here. Well, that was me uh, making the uh, movable shelves. You go in there just like that. Let me show you how I'm making them. What I'm doing is I'm putting a precise dado right down the center of uh, the front trim on it. And then the shelf goes in that dado. Just like that. So in the end, we get uh, something that looks just like this. All the trim is the same size and these three shelves are adjustable. Okay, I'm going to put that dado in there now. Okay, I'm put some glue in the uh, in the dados. You may have noticed that I didn't run any of the trim uh, through the router. Uh, there's a reason for that. Let me show you. You can see here on our picture the nice uh, squared off edges. There's no uh, no rounding over with a router. What they've probably done is just ease the edges with a sander. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ease the edges first using 120 sandpaper and then I'll come back with uh, 220 uh, later on and do all the rest of the sanding. I'm going to prime it with this uh, Kills Premium uh, primer. I've used it before. It uh, works real good. Okay, what we have to paint on this thing is everything inside and out, front and back, inside the cabinets, everything except for this top. Now I'm going to pretty much skip the painting uh, and put you on the time machine so that we'll have time to work on this top. I'm basically only going to only going to prime the bare wood. Uh, this cabinet grade plywood that we used is primed already on both sides. So it doesn't need to be primed again. I got it all primed. I'll go ahead and put the uh, final coat on it and we can get to working on that top. Well, I got the painting done. There's the uh, there's our piece on the left and here's the picture on the right. I don't know if they're going to like it or not, but I think they're getting what they asked for. Back over here to our drawing. The top is made out of a, a pine edge glued panel. So I have a store bought panel too. Uh, my piece is also 48. So let's have it uh, overlap. Uh, let's have it overlap by an inch. 
so that will make it, uh, let's make it about 51 inches. On the drawing, <clears throat> I couldn't tell if the edges were rounded over, um, so I just rounded them over just a little bit. But this, this panel, this is exactly what they used. I'm going to stain it in a color called uh, red oak. Here's a test piece. It actually looks pretty good. Let's get to staining. I'm only going to stain, this is the underside. I'm only going to stain the uh, hangover, the edge hangover on the back. And this is the front side. I'll tell you what, it, it looks uh, this looks real good. Whoever came up with the idea of uh, staining this uh, pine panel dark, uh, I wouldn't have thought it would work, but it looks pretty good. Okay, let's put the top on it and see how that looks. I went ahead and stained the underside after all. Well, there's our shoe stand for Memphis Monday 179. I've uh, got this uh, edge glued pine panel on the top, uh, stained in red oak. Everything else is white. The three shelves here are all uh, uh, adjustable. And we copied the, uh, the internet picture we were given. Uh, to the extent we thought uh, was feasible, we did add some uh, legs that weren't on the original. But other than that, it's, pretty, uh, it's a pretty faithful uh, copy. Well, that does it for another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 179. We built a, a shoe stand. Uh, we basically reproduced a, uh, a version from a picture off the Internet. And uh, I think it turned out at least the way they wanted it. That's the, I, uh, I copied it pretty faithfully. So like and favorite and share and Facebook and tweet and all the stuff you do on the Internet. But most important, make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.